I'm use my arms. Hi, my name is James, and this is James Loves Games, and today I'm going to be talking about the hit new PlayStation 5 game, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and whether or not it is better than a tasty, delicious pizza from Domino's. Let's get right to it. The first thing I want to talk about today is the visuals. Now, if we look over at Ratchet & Clank, this is the perfect game to showcase the hardware of the PS5. Finally, we have a worthy contender to really put the system through its paces. We've got just brilliant colors, totally fluid motion, all kinds of loading and just going through rifts and traveling instantaneously. I mean, the SSD inside the system is just not missing a beat. And this game looks so fantastic. It doesn't matter where you are in the game, everything looks amazing. And there's so much attention to detail. The world really feels alive. And so I think that the PlayStation 5 really has in Ratchet and Clank a game worthy of the system to really show off what the system can do. And you just take one look and you know that this is a next-gen game on a next-gen system. The pizza, on the other hand, it looks delicious and hot and tasty, albeit a little bit greasy, uh, but still it looks pretty good. There's all kinds of curves and, you know, when the light hits it just right, you know, it just it really, really gets your tummy rumbling. But I think as far as visuals go, I would probably much rather look at Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart than sit and look at a pizza. And that's just my preference, but it's just, it looks way better uh, than the pizza. Next, I wanna talk about the sound in Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. The first thing I wanna to touch on is the music. And something that I noticed about the music in this game is that I didn't really notice the music in the game, which is kind of good and kind of bad. It fits really well with each situation without getting in the way of what's going on and being distracting. But at the same time, there just isn't really anything memorable about it. On the whole, I think if you asked anyone who's played this game to hum or whistle a little bit of one of the songs from the game, they probably can't do it. There's just nothing really memorable about it, nothing catchy. It's not like Skyrim or Mario Brothers or Zelda that has this really memorable tune or melody that really stands out. But it is very well made and it fits the moods and the situations throughout the levels really well. And so it should be applauded for that. It's just not stand out. It's not a soundtrack that I kind of want to sit and listen to while I'm at work or while I'm working out or anything like that. Another thing about the sound is the voice acting in this game is top notch. I mean, the characters really come to life. It really feels like a vibrant world. The characters sound genuine and the range of all the voices are just really great. Something that I touched on during some of my live streams was how a lot of the different characters throughout the game showcase sort of different accents from across the United States. You have like the surfer California accent, you have this sort of over-exaggerated Minnesota accent. And I'm pretty sure there were some New York accents sprinkled in there as well. And so it was, they did a really good job of giving the creatures and the characters in this game a lot of personality through their voice. And so the voice acting really should be given a lot of credit because it adds a lot to the game. And I dare say it adds a lot more even than the music itself. Whereas the pizza, on the other hand, it doesn't really make much sound at all. Let me, let me grab a piece. I mean, it sounds... It sounds pretty crispy on the bottom. I mean, if you rub it against the cardboard, you know, it kind of makes a scratchy noise. But on the whole, I mean, not something I would really devote a lot of time to listening to. I mean, the pizza, I'm just gonna come out and say it, it's really only good for eating. I mean, you can look at it and you can listen to it and you're really not gonna get much of a meaningful experience out of it. So I think that in the sound category, Ratchet and Clank wins again. Next, I want to talk about gameplay. And it should be noted that Ratchet and Clank has some of the smoothest and easiest to get into gameplay of pretty much any PS5 game available right now. The combat is really extensive and the range of the weapons, there's so many crazy weapons. That's one of the draws of the Ratchet and Clank series are all the crazy guns. And Pretty much all of these are old favorites from other Ratchet & Clank games with I think a few new ones in as well. 
but everything runs so smoothly and everything just works the way it's supposed to. This doesn't really fit into any of the other categories, so I should probably bring it up here. The bugs were noticeable in the game as well. I remember the very first time I booted this game up on launch day and the very first level I had a bug that didn't let me progress through the game and I had to restart the checkpoint, which wasn't a big deal, but it really left a bad first impression for somebody who'd only been playing the game for about two minutes that this game is pretty laden with bugs. Now I only had problems like this about three times throughout my 15 plus hours playing this game, but the times it did happen, they were noticeably bad. There were a few other instances where the game would either just black out and freeze up my PlayStation to the point where I couldn't even reset it by pushing the buttons. I had to physically pull the cord, the power cord, out of the system and push it back in and restart everything, which is pretty glaringly bad bug to have. But the most hilarious bug that I found was when I was actually fighting the very last boss and I got his health down to 1% fairly quickly, surprisingly quickly, and it didn't matter what I threw at the boss, his health just wouldn't go from 1% to zero. I just couldn't beat the boss no matter what I threw at it. It was just, I was about to run out of ammo. Those bugs weren't very plentiful. Like I said, it happened to me about three times throughout the 15 hours I played. And so it didn't really ruin the experience for me, but it's worth mentioning that in spite of the game running really well and playing really well, it did have hiccups along the way. As far as the pizza goes, I mean, like I said, you can't really do much with it. Uh, it's not nearly as fun as Ratchet and Clank. It's just, it's a pizza. And so Ratchet and Clank, obviously is gonna win for gameplay. Next, I wanna talk about the story. Now the story in Ratchet and Clank is really good and engaging. And I like that you really don't need to know much about the Ratchet and Clank universe to understand what's going on. They explain it all fairly well at the very first tutorial level. They've got a big event going on where there's lots of parades and celebrations. And you sort of get to know who the characters are and their personalities pretty well in the first five minutes. And there's, there's a good quest, there's a main objective, you know, reality is breaking down because the evil bad guy got the gun that opens portals to other dimensions. And so the goal is to get the gun back and close all the portals and fix the problem. Things get more complicated along the way, but that's what makes it a really rich and enjoyable experience. Plus, the addition of Rivet and two different sort of timelines going, you've got ratchet levels and rivet levels going at the same time. And so it's good to have the different personalities and those different experiences in the levels. And really, it, it's a good, tight story that works really well and is really entertaining. But the standout for the Ratchet and Clank series is always the sense of humor. They use a lot of really good jokes across the spectrum. It's just, it's a good lighthearted experience that uh, really you could play in front of your kids without worrying too much if there's gonna be anything offensive. Uh, there's certainly not anything like that, and it's not too violent or anything like that. So it's just a good, clean, wholesome game that uh, is really entertaining. As far as the pizza goes, um, thankfully I ordered this from Domino's. And by the way, I didn't get any money from Domino's Pizza to talk about Domino's, but if they want to throw a little scratch my way, I won't complain. As far as I know, I don't know much about the story of how this pizza was made, but uh, whenever I ordered it online, I got to see a little progress bar that shows when it was you know, being prepped and when it was put in the oven, when, when it, they took it out and when it was in the box and ready to go. And so there was kind of a story there, uh, a bit linear, a bit predictable. You know, it's kind of like, I've seen this before. Can I get a little something new this time? But, uh, you know, they want to play it safe and give you a consistent experience, and I get that. But still, given the choice, Ratchet and Clank's story wins by a mile. Next, I wanna talk about replayability. How much am I going to be able to play this game through the first time? And am I going to be able to pick this up later and enjoy it just as much as I did the first time? I'll say I was a little disappointed because the game was rather short. Like I said, I put probably about 15 hours or so. I don't have an exact count, but it was probably about 15 hours. And that just doesn't seem very long for a triple A game that's really a flagship series for a new system. Especially considering I also got the Platinum Trophy within that 15 hours. And so it was really, I pretty much did almost all there is to do. There are some extra weapons that I could upgrade, but 
I really don't see the point in doing that because I've done everything there is to do in the game. Unless I want to play through the new game plus, which is pretty fun. If you want to play through the story again, you can with all of your upgrades. But honestly, without anything left to unlock, it just seems kind of pointless. While the game is really fun, and I don't see myself picking it up and playing it again for a while. And so that's kind of a bummer. So in that regard, if you're the type of person that really, really values getting your money's worth out of a game, I would suggest waiting for this one to go on sale. If you're just a diehard Ratchet & Clank fan, or you just really need something good to play right now, uh, then I would recommend getting it. Otherwise, eh, it's a little short. In spite of those complaints, the pizza, I mean, this thing's gonna be gone in 30 minutes, an hour at the most. That's if I really take my time. Plus, once I eat this pizza, it's gone. I don't get it back. Frankly, I don't want it back. I really don't want to eat this pizza twice, if you know what I mean. I would much rather play Ratchet and Clank more than once than eat this pizza more than once. So Ratchet and Clank wins, but not really because of Ratchet and Clank. My final category is taste. Now, Ratchet and Clank, I did not buy a physical copy of, and so I can't really give you an honest depiction of what the game tastes like. All I can really give you is my PS5 DualSense controller, and I mean, it, I mean, there's really just no flavor there at all. It tastes kind of plasticky, which is really not surprising given that it's mostly made of plastic, but it's certainly not something that I want to chow down on. Maybe it's better if you cook it, but I'm not really going to do that. The pizza, on the other hand, mmm, mmm, oh. The pizza's good, okay, I'm not gonna lie. The cheese is real creamy, stretchy. The crust is real crispy. I cook this in the oven, give it a little extra crunch. That's where it's at. So as far as taste goes, honestly, I'm gonna have to give it to the pizza. If Insomniac wants to implement some kind of uh, new feature where their games taste better, you know, I'm open to that possibility. Until that happens, Domino's is the clear winner for taste. Okay, so those are all the categories in the competition. You could probably tell Ratchet and Clank won more categories, but really it depends on what you're looking for. If you want a really good game with fun story, great characters, tight gameplay that's really smooth, a beautiful fun experience that the whole family can enjoy, Ratchet and Clank is probably what you should pick out of these two. On the other hand, if you're looking for some sustenance, something to keep you alive, something that you can ingest into your mouth that your body can metabolize into energy so that you can continue living, although it's not quite the healthiest option, then I would recommend the pizza. If it were me, I'd get both. If you can somehow manage to get both Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for the PS5 and a pizza, that would really be the ideal situation. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative and I hope that it helped you in some small way decide between which one of these things you want to get. I know it's a tough decision, but I know that you'll make the right choice. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time on... So good. A delicious pizza from Mazio's. Wow, it is Domino's, isn't it? Holy cow, I needed to do that anyway. Domino's, the PlayStation 5 hit game that just came out from Insomniac Games called Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. What is wrong with my face? If they want a little throw. <laughs> so, thank you very much for watching. And yeah, I'm not gonna say that either. <laughs> okay.